Hello everyone, and welcome to Python programming practice. In this episode, we're going to be covering elite code number 169, majority element. This is classified as an easy problem. Now I'll start with the problem description here. Given an array of size n, find the majority element. The majority element is the element that appears more than n divided by two times. So it appears more than half of the time of the size of the array. You may assume that the array is non-empty and that the majority element always exists in the array. So we're not going, going to be given an array that doesn't have a majority element. There will always be something that is the correct answer. And we'll, we're given a couple examples here. We have a list of three with three, two, three in it. And the majority element here is three because three appears more than n divided by two times. So in this case, the list is length three. n divided by two would be one and a half. So three appears more than one and a half times. It appears two times. And in the second example, we have two, two, three ones, and then two, two. So in this case, we have an array of length, what is this, seven, and the seven divided by two, that's 3.5. So we have to find the element that appears more than 3.5 times. And in this case, two appears one, two, three, four times. So that is the majority element in this case. So to think through this problem, we're going to pull over to the code editor, but first we will check our whiteboard and write down how we might be able to approach this problem. So given the way this problem is structured, we're basically just given an array and we need to find whatever element occurs the most often. It ha just so happens that the element that occurs most often also will occur at least or more than n divided by two ways. But the crux of the problem is we're finding whatever element appears the majority of the time or more than half of the time, which is also the element that appears most often. So for this sequence, I just kind of wrote down at random here, the majority element would be two, both because two appears the most times and because two occurs at least n divided by two times. In this case, this is an array of length seven. So it occurs more than seven divided by two or 3.5 times, it occurs four times. But how could we go about finding what the majority element is in code? Well. That seems like it wouldn't be too difficult. All we really have to do is keep track of each element and count up how many times they appear. So for instance, we could just loop through this array and say, all right, the first thing is two, and now we've seen two one time. The next element is two, so now we've seen two two times. The next element is one, so now we've seen one one time, and we just continue like that. We see two again, so we iterate that up to three. We see a three, so that's a new thing. And at some point, we get through the whole array, and then we're left with a list or dictionary we might use for this in Python that shows each value that exists, how many times does it occur, and then we can just extract whatever the max value is from that and return that as the answer. And one other insight we can have here actually is we don't need to wait until we get to the end necessarily in order to spit out the final value. Every time we're looking to store something in this dictionary we're building up, we can check at that point if the value there is bigger than n divided by two already. Because if we've already got more than n divided by two entries in there, it's already the majority element, and we don't need to finish looping through the rest of the array. We can just return the answer at that point. So let's jump back into the code editor and see how we could code up this solution. So basically what we're trying to do here is create a dictionary that loops through every element we're given. So we're given a list of nums. We're going to want to store the results in a dictionary. So we'll create an empty dictionary here. And then we'll just loop over the nums. So for n in nums. So first we can check if n is currently in the sums dictionary. If it's not, we need to add it and initialize it to a value of one. So if n not in sums, if it's not in sums yet, 
we will add it as sums n will initially equal one. That means we've only seen that number one so far. And else, if it already is in sums, well, we just need to increment it by one. So we'll take this and just add plus here. So plus equals one. We're incrementing or counting the value up by one. And finally, after we increment the value of sums n by one, we can then check if the amount of times it's been seen is more than n divided by two. And if it is, then we can simply return that result. So finally, we can say if sums n, the new value after we increment it by one, is greater than the length of our input array, so len n, or nums, divided by two, then we can just return our current n, because that has to be the majority element. This identifies it, what the majority element is. As soon as something is bigger than that, that is the majority element. So we can return that. Um, so this should be a working solution here. So let us submit that and pull over to see what we get as our result. It's processing. So we got a runtime of 261 milliseconds, faster than 41.6% of Python 3 submissions. So it passed. It wasn't particularly fast, it seems, but it was good enough to get past the solution. Um, and this shouldn't actually be too bad of a solution in theory because we only looped through the, the list once. So this is actually an O of N solution, a linear length solution. There are other solutions we could do that would be actually more than O of N, but might be simpler. So I'm actually going to go back to the whiteboard and show what one of those would be just because it's kind of interesting. So one insight we could have here where we could make a different solution that is easier in terms of code, it'll actually be worse in terms of runtime. But the nature of this problem means that if we sort any array that we're given, then the majority element is going to exist at the middle of the array. For instance, if we take this array that we did in our last example and sorted it, well, we'd have one, two, 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 three, four. And you'll notice that if you go to the middle of the array, so say the length of the array, which is seven, and the middle would be the floor divide two of that. So we'd be what at element three, zero, one, two, three. The middle element is always going to be the majority element after it is sorted because the majority element has to appear more than half of the length of the array. That means that the middle element after sorting is always going to be the majority element. And this should be the case even if the length of our sequence here were even, or if our majority element was like the max or the min value in the array so that it was all on one side or the other. So let's jump back into the code editor and also code up this solution that's based on first sorting the input array and then simply extracting the value that is at the middle of the array, which would be the length of the array um, divided by two or floor divide two. So let's go back to our code editor and delete our code and create a new solution. Well, what we're trying to do here is return the sorted version of the input, so sorted nums, and we want to get the middle element of sorted nums. So we want to return the element at the length of nums floor divide two. We do floor divide because if it's odd, we will get a floating point number here. So floor divide rounds down to an integer where we can actually have an index guaranteed. So basically we're just sorting it, then taking whatever element is at the middle after it's sorted. And this is only one line, but it should actually give us the proper result here. So let's submit this one as well and see what we got for this one. This ran in 168 milliseconds and was faster than 93.5% of Python solutions. So even though this solution is in theory slower than the previous one computationally, the last one was an O of N solution. This is actually 
an O of n log n solution because the fastest sorting algorithms you can do are on the order of n log n. That's what a sorting operation takes. So in the limit of computational complexity, this would actually be worse than the first solution, but for perhaps shorter and simpler problems, this is actually faster, at least on leak code. And it's a simpler solution in terms of the amount of code necessary to write, and perhaps a bit more elegant conceptually than our first crack at the problem. So I hope you found this explanation of this problem useful. Thanks for watching and keep coding.